Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is April 12. We continue to read about the kingship of David as he rules over the nation of Israel. We continue to remind ourselves that David is often referred to as a man after God's own heart. And we see so many great qualities and so many great characteristics in David that would help us to understand why he would be described in such a way. However, we're going to notice starting today that even in a life of a man of God's own heart, there is much difficulty. There are family issues. We've already seen a time in David's life where his lust for Bathsheba kind of takes over and he commits adultery with her that ultimately leads to murder. We've seen his penitent prayer after that event in Psalm 51, and we've been reminded of how keenly his heart wants to follow God. But today we're going to see that he continues to have family issues. First, we're told about the birth of Solomon. Now, Solomon is a birth that comes to David by Bathsheba. So after the child that Bathsheba is pregnant with initially dies, then she gives birth to Solomon. And Solomon is David's son, who we know now will later sit on the throne of Israel. But before we get to any of that, it's interesting to note here that Solomon is born and he is loved by the Lord, not just by David and Bathsheba. And so the Lord even says to name him Jedidiah because the name Jedidiah means loved by the Lord. I find this fascinating. It's just a little tidbit, almost like a parenthetical expression to name him Jedidiah. And as far as I know, we never see that name given to Solomon again. Solomon is simply known as Solomon, the son of David. As we read on, we're introduced to another of David's sons by the name of Absalom and another of David's sons by the name of Amnon. We start with Amnon. Amnon has a great affection for, he thinks he's in love with, Tamar. The problem is that Tamar is his brother Absalom's sister, so a half-sister to Amnon. Amnon is so in love with her, he thinks, that he almost makes himself sick. And so a friend of his says, hey, why don't you invite her in? Why don't you pretend to be sick? invite her in to prepare a meal for you, and then take her for yourself. Well, that's exactly what Amnon does. He pretends to be sick. David goes to see about him. He tells David that he needs Tamar to come and feed him a meal out of her own hand. And David, of course, not suspecting a thing, agrees to this. Tamar goes, she prepares a meal, and when she does so, Amnon takes her into his bedroom and rapes her. After having his way with her, then the text says that he has a hatred for her greater than the love he felt for her, and he banishes her. Even at the pleading of Tamar, she is saying he's doing something wrong. She'll even be with him and marry him, but please don't send her away. He does anyway. When he does, Tamar goes to live with Absalom. Absalom appears to say everything's okay, he'll take care of her, don't worry about it anymore. But really we see that Absalom has just been seething for some two years. Finally, about two years pass and Absalom is shearing some sheep. He invites his father, David, and his brothers to the sheep shearing. David doesn't go and he says he doesn't really need for all the brothers to go. But Absalom insists, so David sends his sons to the sheep shearing. Absalom takes advantage of that opportunity to kill Amnon. David's sons come back wailing that their brother Amnon has been killed by Absalom. And David is sorrowing as well because he loves Absalom as well as his other children. And yet now his son Absalom has killed his son Amnon. Absalom flees, and he's gone away for some three years, and David longs for him, but the two are at odds with one another. Because so much time has passed, Joab, David's commander, has decided that he needs to take action to reunite David with his son Absalom, who is separated from him because of this evil thing that he has done. So Joab schemes with a woman 
who's going to approach the king with a story. This story is one that Joab has thought of. This is a story, these are words that Joab puts in the woman's mouth. And she tells the king about having a couple of sons and one of her sons kills the other son. And now because of that, there are people who are out to get her living son and they're threatening to kill him. And David vows to protect her son and to protect her family's inheritance, that nothing is going to happen to her son. And so then the woman says, well, why would you do all this for me and have your own son, Absalom, separated from you? Why don't you take action? Then David realizes this has been a setup. He asks her to be very honest with him. And he says, did Joab put you up to this? And she says, Joab certainly did. And so David realizes that there is some wisdom to what Joab has done, and he gives the order to Joab to have Absalom return to his home. So Absalom is brought home, but he does not see the king for another long period of time. And that's where our reading will pick up as we continue in this story tomorrow. But for now, let's just realize that even when a man can be described as a man after God's heart, here is a man who is in love with God, who writes many wonderful psalms, who is the king of Israel, one whom God has blessed over and over again. But even he has issues within his own home. So when we look at ourselves and we strive to be people who are men and women after God's heart, and yet we see that we still struggle in life, we still may have family issues of our own. We may still have those things that seem to separate us from God. We should not lose heart because remember, the story is not about David. The story is about God and God never gives up on his people. Remember, God says over and over, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. God does expect our obedience, but God also promises to be with us always. This is something that could, should cause us to walk with our heads held high and a spring in our steps because we are children of the King. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.